All right, so what I've done, I just taped the light to a piece of cardboard so that we can throw it in here. It's actually got two different power settings. It's got a low and a high. They're not really that much different, but it says it lasts eight hours on high and 14 hours on low. So this is what it looks like with the light inside of it. You can see there a little better the light that's coming out of the box. We'll try turning the lights off. I already know it doesn't work quite as good as I'd like with the light off my camera, that is. It just doesn't pick it up very well. That looks pretty good. There you can kind of see the, that's the light on the floor right there, and then that's the box. Okay, so I hope this gives you a general idea of what we're working with. Oh, I think they're going to look great. There's a few things to consider here and uh, you know we'll need to talk about all this but I'm assuming that in the end you're going to want the metal to look rusty so we probably want to use just raw steel so that it looks you know kind of rustic um, you know we're trying to keep the cost down so like trying to paint them or something I think it's just going to take a lot more time. I mean, it's all about what you guys want, but, uh, and something that's important, okay, as you can see, if we make these designs too thin with this material, like see this, this has a cut that goes all the way across. This was a design flaw that I did when I built this. Okay, it makes it where See, it's not very strong. Okay, so when you've got, like this one's a little more connected, but it, it's got the same problem, but let's see if I can find a spot like, okay. Over here, see it's a little more connected, and so it's a little stronger. So what I'm trying to say is that the design pattern that you use needs to not have really super thin spots and it needs to not have a cut that's going to go all the way across like this spot that goes all the way across okay that makes it kind of weak and I think it might be able to get damaged but if we do like a repeating geometric pattern flower of life or something and it has a little bit thicker uh, meat to the sides don't know if I have, here's something I can show you. Let's see. Okay. But, you know, something like this is going to work out pretty good. It's pretty strong because it's, you know, it's connected all the way across. This 16th inch thick material is just not super strong. Uh, but it's going to be the most cost effective because if we jump up to the next thickness, it, it doubles in price, just on material. Um, and it also takes me more time to cut it. So, and another consideration is the plasma cutter does not do small, like really small shapes. I'm trying to get this thing to focus. I'm trying to show you 
see how these were supposed to be a little bit smoother okay so it's not a laser so really really small shapes is just not what it excels at it's bigger shapes like this uh, no problem you know like that came out good you can see the size difference You know, on something like those little tiny shapes like that. See how see how those didn't come out very good? Alright. So I just want you to understand how the plasma cutter works. And obviously, I mean I think you already know, you know, you need to have things that like connect all the little pieces of metal or else, you know, it just fall out like that. You know what I mean? If it doesn't have things that keep it all connected, it's just gonna be a hole. All right, sorry for the really crude video. I hope this helps. Please call, text, email uh, with any questions. Um, I really hate typing emails, <laughs> so feel free to call me, okay? But everyone's busy, I understand. Um, anyways, guys, I'm really excited to do this project. Uh, Want to get it going so that we can get it done. Okay? Much love. Later.